On today's episode, studs, duds, a uh, fish-sounding tight end name who may have had or may not have had a great game, and then Tim Boyle, the legend will grow as you discover things with us <laughs> near the end of the show. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. Hey, Foot Clan, the holidays, they can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with HelloFresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, you maybe realize I got to work on the fitness. I got to get active. I got to do things, but... Stop get, talking to me. Get into the gym. It can be a hassle, and our friends at Echelon... They understand that, and that's why they bring the gym home. Look, you got the Esh you got Echelon is the affordable way to get the workout equipment, the workout community, and an instructor's motivation right in the comfort of your own home. Echelon's fitness app provides you thousands of live and on demand classes with great music from your favorite artists like Pitbull and many more. With Echelon, you can work out any time, day, night, crush those fitness goals. And look, Echelon's full range of affordable workout equipment includes the stationary bikes, smart rowers, sleek fitness screens, and the auto-folding treadmill, and they're all connected to provide the Echelon experience. Right now, for a limited time, our listeners can get up to $800 off MSRP. To get this exclusive podcast discount, text FANTASY to 818181. Text FANTASY to 818181 to get up to $800 off MSRP. Text FANTASY to 818181. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Yeah. Is this, is this <laughs> a bark? I heard a bark. <laughs> Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Back with you. Back and barking. <laughs> Bark with you. <laughs> Monday, November 22nd. <laughs> Just two days until the Megalobowl. Oh. I'm sorry, the Megalodon. <laughs> Man. Speaking of barking, that's what a shark is known for. <laughs> when they're on the way, <laughs> the shark always barks. And that's why you can always get out of the water quickly. Mm -hmm. The Megalodon Show, if you're new to the podcast. Oh, another is, one got away. That is just another... Uh, I should stop barking. Yeah, another... <laughs> it does clue in your prey <laughs> when you start barking at them. Now, the Megalodon Show is our super long episode on Wednesday ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. We've chosen over the years to let our employees have thanksgiving it's ridiculous but it's very nice for all of your holiday travel that you might be on you get that extra long megalodon episode mm -hmm. and uh you know make your holidays special with the ballers yeah it'll be all the matchups the start set jason's boom boom kicker the dfs oh, segment which i lost this week pretty badly now thank you cd lamb concussion oh brutal jason yes Megalodon is Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Normally, mm -hmm. the boom boom is Thursday. Yeah, I get an extra day to prepare normally. Yeah. yeah like, are you able? I mean. There's going to be a roses like, or a red situation. This is like Pulitzer stuff. That yeah. I'm on a hot streak. Little so. Cadbury award winning stuff that's coming out. Right. So let me just say, because I've got a, sh a shorter time. Uh -huh. This will be my best one ever. Mm, when your when your back's against when the wall. When my back is against the wall. This will be <laughs> my best one ever. You hear me? <laughs> uh, it's almost like you're talking to some almost. team. <laughs> some team of writers. Yeah, but it's not because it's mine. I do it. And you will make and sure. And I will make sure this is my best <laughs> one ever. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure for yourself <laughs> I'm, uh, you know i'm gonna step up to the plate uh, it out of the park if you were talking to somebody they could <laughs> they could pay attention at youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers huge weekend of football um the injury situation was out of control heading into the games just ridiculous so shout out to brooks who got the game day alerts yes up out there you could make decisions with them 
And um, we've got studs and duds on today's show. But first, let's react in a sophisticated yes. Monday pun day manner. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, let's kick it off with Elijah Roar. Roar. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Jeffer Wynn. Oh, Colt Mick. Joy. You think anybody started Colt McJoy? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> uh, well, they would have had to if they didn't have Kyler not in a hurry, Murray. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about DK Metcalf? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well done. And Darnell Money. money, 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 money. Oh, that's you got a glimpse of the future. That's with, sophisticated money. Yes. You got a glimpse of the future with Darnell Money. Mm-hmm. Uh, Krusty Wilson. <laughs> Tyron Taylor. Sands Arnold. Sacked Prescott. <laughs> yes, he was. Oh, is that P. Higgins? Oh, no. And he wasn't great, but he was okay, Dylan. And then, of course, Jonathan Taylor touched him. Woo! P. Higgins? P. Higgins, I mean, that's... That is- you brought the fire. Low, low hanging fruit. Just <laughs> outstanding work. And these all come in from, I mean, this isn't us. No. no. These are the people. Unlike the uh, boom, boom, which is all. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, TheFantasyFootballers.com. Mm. You can find the rankings over there. We got one more game tonight. It's the matchup you've all been waiting for. What? Which one? Tom Brady, Daniel Jones. Oh, yes. The The future and the past and. I mean, that, to be clear, <laughs> that's future. all Tom Brady is the future and the past. Yeah. Um, I I have a matchup with Al Borland. Come, we were just talking about this coming up bef- in two weeks. We have the same record, the same points, and we're facing uh, – and you seem can, – can I just be honest with you, Al? You can. Um, I'm worried about – you getting eliminated this year. Like, I, I feel like for your mental health, you mm. need the title. I have the same worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because your confidence is supreme. It, I mean, it's through the roof and the expectation is high. Your roster is great. Uh, there's just no chance you lose. Correct. But we have a head to head matchup for the bye week. And so I'm really looking forward to the ante- I'm kind of setting the stage here because I want to build some anticipation for this battle. Because I want to see what happens to you as a person if you don't win that game. You don't want to see that. No. I mean, you are riding on every I mean, every move of Najee Harris. You're wa- you're making Oh, does this calf look all right there? Is this groin all right? Oh, that concussion last night must have put the fear of God in you. I didn't like it. Yeah. Did you see Najee get up and just truck stick the trainer? Yeah, he was he was a little upset that they were pulling him out, except they 100% needed to pull him out and yeah, check that he was okay. The irony is you might act out in the middle of a concussion. Yeah. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. He did come back. Yeah. He, he came back into the game. They took mm-hmm. him into the locker room and I think he punched out the whole team and then he <laughs> went back out on the field. The Eagles, they signed Dallas Goddard to a four-year, $59 million contract extension. He is their tight end. Congratulations, Mr. Goddard. Take that, Zach Ertz. Who had a weekend. Yes. Uh, The Seahawks, Chris Carson, season-ending neck surgery. Yeah. Um, The writing was on the wall here. It was not trending the right direction, but he is gone. Hopefully he's okay for next year. Yeah. neck. You don't like neck neck surgery. No. I'm anti-neck surgery. Lamar Jackson, inactive for week 11 due to an illness. This started to break Saturday night that this wasn't looking great. Got put back on the injury report. Yeah, I mean, you could tell when he was, uh, you know, filmed walking into the stadium. You know, very similar when he was uh, walking back to the locker room. Well, when he walked, that was very rapid. Right, but the same like waddle. Like (laughs) You're saying this was a poop walk? It was, uh, yeah, I mean, it was one of those sick poop walks. So, mm. but Hollywood missed the game from an illness as well. No, Hollywood's, I believe, was a quad injury. He uh, was marked with illness as yeah, well. I, oh, really? I, I was yeah. told it was he, illness. Okay, I, he was missing practice this week with the quad injury. His quad was ill. <laughs> um, but maybe he caught whatever was going around there. I mean, whatever they, they got, it's not... Um, not pretty. No, it's not good. So that was a surprise. Uh, you you then had to play your Ravens with 
Huntley behind center. He played uh, all. He played okay. I think for, people wanted to see Bateman with Lamar for the first time. And, certainly, but at least uh, you know the the most started player would be Mark Andrews, who had an excellent game. Amari Cooper was placed on the COVID list over the weekend. He missed the game. He's going to miss the Thanksgiving game on Thursday due to being unvaccinated, I believe. As, as will C.D. Lamb, the concussion protocol he's in. It looks like he will miss Thursday, so they should be without the two-star receivers. This is just... Which they really needed them this past look, weekend. And they really won't need them this upcoming weekend. So this Thursday, we will be delighted, likely with another Tim Boyle, start from the Detroit Lions. I know that Jared Goff is saying maybe he plays. Either way, we will be delighted with This is the Thursday the, game? Yeah, the the Lions and a Cowboys team without their two best wide receivers. This is that sucks. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that, that really sucks. It it's, does. It's not it's not like it's their fault, but I'm saying it's Yeah. Well, it's the NFL's fault that they continue to put Detroit on uh Thanksgiving. Yeah, you know how this is gonna end, right? Like, how do you not it's get, a tradition. It's the only thing that Lions fans have. Yeah, but is they get to play on Thanksgiving? At some point, you gotta you gotta remove relegate. A you gotta relegate a team off of the holiday. Yeah, I feel like it's also a punishment, though. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, like the Cardinals this week are on by. What a great week to be on by. It's like a holiday. We like sure. hey, rest up, see your family, have Thanksgiving. Playing on Thanksgiving, I know it's like a. Uh, supposed to be this honor. Oh, it's an it's an honor to play on Thanksgiving. If I was a player, I'd be like. That didn't sucks. We, I got to play on Thanksgiving. Didn't we just have the Lions with the backup quarterback on Thanksgiving last yes. year? And was didn't he ball out? Wasn't it Driscoll? First I've, play of the game hits. Yeah, was it Driscoll? It was. No, it I, was the guy who was backing him up. Or Driscoll was the third string. Was that it? Yeah. yeah. I just know Galladay scored a touchdown on like the first yes. play on a bomb. Yeah, for half a game, I believe he balled out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the boil, well, boil rules. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Uh, C.D. Lamb, like we said, concussion protocol. A.J. Brown, Mike, uh, suffered another mm. injury, returned. Yeah, he had a hand so injury like right away, and then he took a a shot, which it looked like a re just a regular hit into the shoulder area, but it apparently was a it was a chest injury, and that was just before the half, and then he was out for the rest of the game. Yeah, so it, it was. Same game. Really Mark, unfortunate. Marcus Johnson, a guy who, for DFS purposes, a lot of people pick to step up in it the was absence David of Julio. Blow. It was Blow. Uh, oh, David Blau. Yeah. Yes. That's right. It was Sorry. Count Dracula. Oh, David Blau. <laughs> um, but it, the the Titans' offense is injured. The entire like, yes. other than Ryan Tannehill, every starting player on offense that they want is gone. Yeah, including uh. Last week's kind of breakout guy, Marcus Johnson, who had a hundo this past week, was a, a solid DFS shot this week because he was super cheap. And with A.J. Brown's injury, Marcus was set up for, you know, he could have had some success. But no, he tweaked his hamstring on an end zone target. That was tough. I had him in a ton of DFS yeah. lineups, and he was done. Uh, Justin Fields exited the game with a rib injury. Bruised ribs, not broken. Uh but it's going to be up in the air whether he starts or Andy Dalton's back out there. It didn't hurt Darnell Mooney to have Andy Dalton out there. Well, yeah, I agree. But to be fair to the to Justin Fields, the Darnell Mooney huge play was a wide receiver screen that was thrown horizontal. So yeah. Justin Fields could have made that play too. Which one? Darnell Mooney's huge touchdown. No, it wasn't a wide receiver screen. Yes. No, it wasn't. I don't think you, my my what memory am I thinking was of then? not a screen. No, he hit him downfield and then Mooney. I, well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe wrong. he did both. I, I think what both was his were final true. stat line? It was awesome. He had a great. <laughs> game. Money, 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 money. We did watch the game, right? Yeah, there maybe, was maybe it was. There was definitely. A, I know he juked him after the catch. I just don't remember how far downfield. There was def holy sixteen targets, five catches. 16 targets and five catches yeah, for Mooney? Whoa. That's right. 120. If you see five for 121 and one, you're just, like, that's a great just line. Just focus on that part. If you see 16 <laughs> targets, you're like, that's awesome. But when you put them together, you're it like. It was super a screen. <laughs> it definitely was. Mike was right. Oh. We should always trust his memory, Jason. Yeah. Honestly, Foot Clan, Mike, Mike's memory is unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. In spite of all the efforts he's taken in his well, life I mean, to look obliterate. Look at that it. noggin. You got a lot of memories up in that thing. <laughs>
<laughs> you got memories for two, three people. <laughs> Look, you've never seen a creased brain like this thing. <laughs> oh my god! So many wrinkles. Oh, nice brain, bro. Uh, Michael Carter exited with an ankle injury. Yeah. Jamal Agnew hip injury. Uh, that didn't look good. The Agnew injury seemed significant, and I know. I don't even know what conclusions to draw for. If he misses time, it's like. Uh, opens up uh, clearly him missing time in this game opened up targets for not the not the postman no no targets for Dan Arnold Jordan Howard did not return injured knee in the third quarter uh, he had been getting a lot of work after a Miles Sanders fumble so we'll see what happens there Rashad Penny hamstring injury I think on the first play of the game it, it was <sighs> and here's this what guy. was so interesting the news comes out about Chris Carson he's going to miss the season. Alex Collins has been on the injury report a little bit. He has not been special at all. Um, this whole offense has been putrid. Um, but play one, snap one, it wasn't Alex Collins out there. It was Rashad Penny. And it was like, oh, is this the time where they're they're going to go to Penny, their first-round draft pick? And it wasn't just that. It was – I remember – commenting out loud going holy crap Rashad Penny because he was shot out of a cannon he looked awesome and then was injured and on that he, play and, and he gone. tapped himself out yeah knee injury for Eric Ebron towards the end of the game oh. we'll monitor that Tim Patrick fireball Jones yeah, signed baby. a three-year 34 million dollar extension ka -ching. let's talk about what that means well it means the future of Cortland Sutton is probably not as a Bronco wait That's, did he is this you didn't see that just come through it just came through wait what? Breaking news. Rewind. Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, yeah. Let me. Let me. Cold let me, takes. Let me. <laughs> freezing cold <laughs> takes. I don't know that there's ever been a quicker cold take. Uh, let me break this news. It three the, minutes ago, it the happened. The Broncos reached an agreement on an extension for wide receiver Cortland Sutton, four years, sixty million dollars, with thirty-four point nine million guaranteed. Take <laughs> that, Fireball Jones. Wow. So, so they are locking up this receiving core without a quarterback. Um. Yeah, I mean, I believe that that should be their next step is figure that out. Wow. But, uh, yeah. It, it, is that is that as shocking to you guys, considering yes. how uninvolved he's been? It, it Not the uninvolvement, because I think that he is a, an excellent wide receiver, and I think the Broncos know that. Uh, it's been, you know, the, the quarterback choices and things that haven't gotten Cortland Sutton the ball. Where it was interesting is giving Fireball that money and you have Jerry Judy on a rookie contract, and you do have K.J. Hamler, who, granted, is, tore his ACL this year, and I, I think he all, did he miss a bunch of time as a rookie as well? So maybe they're just, this was a, like, Hamler's not going to be healthy, but that is a lot of money to lock up into your wide receiver core when your signal caller is Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, I mean, I, they I have to figure that out. Someone's going to be going hard in the paint. For Aaron. For Aaron Rodgers. Well, I mean, I, this is a – I like to see this. They're making a commitment to the fantasy community to put us in a state of not knowing who to play every week for years to come. They want us to not know if it's Judy, Patrick, or Sutton on any given week for four year, a minimum four-year time period. Yeah, it's a, it's a real shame as it stands now. I mean, you the last month – Corlin Sutton is on a pace, a full game season, a 17 game full game season of 620 receiving yards. Pay the man. Um, you were going to say that Sutton, it seemed like maybe that deal was going to make it more clear yes. with Judy and Tim Patrick. Exactly. But, um, I mean, all three are good wide receivers. That's the truth. I um, only wish you would have said there is no way <laughs> that Cortland Sutton. I guarantee. <laughs> uh, Saquon Barkley expected to play tonight. Ah, that's nice. Bucks are optimistic. Gronkowski will make a healthy return. Not an unhealthy return like last time. And uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. So, I mean, thank, thankfully Sleeper could break mm -hmm. that Cortland Sutton news right here, right now. Um, shall we get into the studs? Mm-hmm. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. I know we normally start with quarterbacks. I'm not going to do that. I'm starting with the running back position. We'll rotate back to quarterbacks. Okay. Yeah, because... It feels like Jonathan Taylor deserves the headline. Yeah, and that's such a shame for Austin Eckler. <laughs> I mean, 32 for 185 and four on the ground for Jonathan Taylor, three for 19 and one through the air. 
Eight straight games of 100-plus scrimmage yards and a touchdown. The only other running back to ever do that was LT. Oh, man. Really? LaDainian Tomlinson no. broke fantasy football. He changed keeper rules in fantasy football because if you had him, he was you just won championships over and over and over. And that's what it feels like right now, this little run with Jonathan Taylor. And here's the best part. The best part. This was against the Buffalo Bills, who have shut down everybody. Yeah. This isn't like a, you know the end of last year where you're looking at Jonathan Taylor's dominance and you go, well, his schedule was very easy. This was just, he's I'm better than you. I'm bigger than you. I'm faster than you. Mm -hmm. It was awesome to, to watch. I mean, every time he touched the ball, he just, he looked like a, a unmitigated NFL superstar, and and I think that's what you get. I think going into next year, he I He's mean in the number one conversation. Yeah, it's him and Christian McCaffrey. And uh, I saw a recent poll on that, and the the vote was in Taylor's favor. I mean, recency, I'm sure, playing a part, but sometimes it it's a trend. And this is the only eight game hundred yard plus a touchdown trend that's that has insanity. happened since LT. Um. Just so many red zone rushing attempts. Austin Eckler had four touchdowns of his own. We had somebody in our league of record with both guys. That was nine touchdowns at the running back position. They won this week. They won, yeah. They wanted to move some touchdowns to next week. But Austin Eckler was amazing. Two receiving, two rushing. Outstanding game for him. And, you know, again, Pittsburgh on paper, it doesn't look like the most juicy matchup, right? Like maybe Taylor's fine. Maybe Eckler's fine. But you don't look at it as like you're going to break your own records mm -hmm. in this game, and both of them did that. Joe Mixon, this is why Joe, nobody knows Joe Mixon is, is great. It's because these weeks happen, and Joe Mixon, he just keeps coming in third or fourth on a week. But two touchdowns for Mixon, 123 yards, 30 attempts. 30 carries. I was talking to Mike all game. Yes. I was like, I feel like every time I look at the Bengals' screen, it's just a handoff to Joe Mixon, and then I check, and I'm like, oh, it was 30 carries. Outstanding. And uh, DeAndre Swift ended up with a touchdown on a big run. Two pl two straight weeks for him, 130-plus rushing yards. Christian McCaffrey, 7 for 60 and 1 in the receiving game, just 10 carries. Uh, I believe I believe Cam Newton out-carried him, or they were tied. Uh, I know, oh, he, yeah, I, know we'll I knew you. Newton at least had 10 of them. So Cam they, Newton had 10 carries. So they, they both had 10 carries. And still a great game for Christian McCaffrey. When you get eight receptions in a PPR league and you get over 100 and a touchdown, that's like it feels like his baseline. Dalvin Cook and Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, some of the stalwarts all had nice weeks. And James Conner mm -hmm. had another touchdown. He now has 12 touchdowns on the year, leading the league. Also caught five passes for the Colt McJoy Cardinals. Devontae Freeman keeps yeah. getting it done. 16 for 49 and a touchdown. That was something to – it was interesting to see what you have. Uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell was cut. Latavius Murray was back. Is this prescriptive of – like, or, or was it simply Latavius Murray was getting the – you know, he's just back from his injury. So they still went with Freeman, or do you feel like it will be Freeman moving forward? I think the prescriptive – part is that they believe in Devonta Freeman and I think that they trust him and they're fine utilizing him that's why Lev Bell was let go I do think some of the fact that he was the clear-cut um, RB1 here was due to Latavius Murray he looked injured still Clyde right. Edwards Alaire came back 12 yeah. for 63 and a touchdown two targets two for 13 beginning of this game it was pretty much all Clyde um so that was interesting to see. I know a lot of people were hesitant to start him, but came right back in and five carries for Daryl Williams. Yeah, I don't know what his uh, we got pulled up his receiving total. I don't remember how many he had, but uh, looks like three and targets. Clyde also had a couple, a handful of big plays in the first half that were called back on penalties. So he looked good. It was nice to see. Uh, he did. He did something really awful though. Oh, uh, did you guys see that? Yeah, I had, I, to, oh, I had to shield oh my, my children's yes, eyes. Yes. Do you see him when he was running into the end zone? He pointed. Yes. Oh, oh what man. a scumbag! Oh. I mean, what dirt to point? Celebrate your touchdown? There's not supposed to be fun around here. Yeah, I think um, uh, I saw some kids ended up doing drugs after that. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Um, it's bad. It's I'm bad. I'm glad they're rooting out the emotion from a sport. 
Well, that's what I think everybody wants. Everybody has really talked for years about NFL. Can we please? It's just stop, too fun. Stop these emotional outbursts of joy on the field. Yeah. Except, except, uh, which and he was called for a taunting penalty, fifteen yards. Except when it comes to social media, and then the NFL accounts actually promote the taunting plays that until they get called out by the entire world. And then they delete the tweets hmm. except the internet doesn't forget. <laughs> uh, yeah, that happened. And it reminds me a lot of when the NFL was trying to simultaneously remove big hits. And then they used big hits in their promo videos it's <laughs> yeah. it's or when they man. took away dancing and celebrating in the end zone and then put it back yeah. because duh, I mean, the league Why is... Why do you do these stupid things? They don't call you the no fun league for yeah. no reason. You find a new way to do it every single year. And frankly, you ask players to go out and play as hard as they possibly can to train their bodies, to play as a team. You put 60,000 people in the stands to cheer for them. And then when they celebrate... We're dumb. I We're mean, dumb. there they are... The NFL's got us. I'm telling you. This is part of the making sure that we keep talking about it. This is the apple. This is, we're going to take this stuff away just so we could give it back to you and celebrate it in a little bit. I'm We've got ports back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. It, it's just so that they can bring it back in a couple of years and be like, now we encourage taunting. The, Heck yeah. How man. about you just. The pros love taunting. How about you just define taunting in a real way? Yes. There are, there are things that should not happen. You know what shouldn't happen? Is when a guy's down on the ground after a hit, you don't stand over him. Absolutely. And, and, you know, scream in their face. You shouldn't be truck sticking people, fighting on the field. Shoving people after a play is over. The, yeah, Punching yeah. Justin Herbert in the stomach when he's on the ground. What was that? But, yeah. but running into the end zone while pointing should be one of the things permitted. Yeah. yeah. You should be laughing while pointing. <laughs> that's, <what you, laughs> that's what you should be doing. Um, Which is what, just for the record. It's what Jason does at – we went to the Suns game the other night. Oh, yeah. And every time the opposing team would make a mistake, Jason would be screaming that voice. <laughs> you, hit, you hit him with the Nelson? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, baby. It's I mean, fun. Look, this show is not the No Fun League. We have fun here. Yes. Um, and uh, let's <laughs> take a second to have some fun with our gifts, with our comfort, with our lives. Uh, thank our sponsors today, Brooklyn and – there is no such thing as too much comfort, and uh, I'll, That's bet, true. I'll bet you could use a little more. Well, good news, you're in luck. Brooklinen's biggest sale of the year is coming this weekend, which means serious savings on essentials for creating your dream space. This sale is big news for your comfort. Brooklinen's entire site of super soft, seriously cozy essentials is on sale this weekend. Brooklinen was created to bring those dreamy comfort items to every corner of your space at prices so affordable they make you pinch yourself. And shopping doesn't get any easier than Brooklinen bundles. You could save more when you stock up on essentials for the space. Their comfort game, it's unmatched, and their lineups keep getting better. You got the five-star sheets that, that they were famous for. That's just the start. Their collection now includes everything from dreamy decor to newly launched slippers. Oh. If, if those sheets are as comfortable as they are, those slippers have to be outrageous. Don't miss out. Brooklinen's biggest sale of the year. It's happening now. And if you're listening after the sale, you could still save. Visit brooklinen.com and use the promo code FANTASY for $20 off minimum purchase of 100 bucks. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code FANTASY. We also want to thank Theragun for sponsoring the show. Don't let the stress of daily life weigh on your body whether you're an elite athlete or someone like me just trying to make it through a yes. tension-free day. Oh, I was answering the call for the elite athlete. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Mike has answered the call. Uh, I'm elite on the couch. Elite pickleballer. <laughs> um, look, we, the truth is, is we've had their guns forever. We do use them in yes. all of the, a the athletic adventures that we as late 30s <laughs> not we're, athlete perfect we're, we're elder statesmen um the oh my gosh the, the theragun is especially jason it's oh, legitimately so the theragun is legitimately amazing like amazing i've had times where i'm like i feel like i could barely walk i'll blast my calves with this thing and i, I feel so much better it's unbelievable and it what's funny is we've used them for years and they keep coming out with new versions of it and to be honest with you it was always amazing but it was pretty loud now they have the newer versions that are like as quiet as an electric toothbrush. Um, they have OLED screens on them. It makes you feel like you're holding something from the future. Mm -hmm. Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. 
Go to therabody.com slash footballers right now and get your Generation 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash footballers, therabody.com slash footballers. Um, we can rotate, rotate back to the quarterback position. Najee Harris ended up getting into the end zone. He runs for about three a carry every week, and it never matters. My, That's the truth. I mean, he, how many weeks in a row has he been like that? He's, he's unstoppable because of the utilization. When you get that much work, um, he will have a great rookie contract um, before, you know, apparently dying. I mean, you can't take the workload forever, but he is. He's he's my favorite player to watch right now. 3.6 a carry on the year, 3.4 over the last five weeks. Doesn't matter. Been inside the top uh, 15 every week since week one. Almost always in the top 12. If they improve their offensive line. Because the first guy, what's crazy. He is, should be drafted very high if they have a solution at quarterback. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where his yards per carry is terrible. And yet the first guy never tackles him. He breaks. It, it takes a village. the numbers, yeah, yeah. All right, Justin Herbert, the number one quarterback on the week again. 30 for 41, 382 and 3, ran for 90 yards on the ground. He is uh, the first quarterback ever with 380 passing yards and 90-plus yards on the ground. It makes sense. I mean, it seems impossible to do that. Uh, he had almost 100 rushing yards and then threw for more than – I mean – I spent last week thinking, I mean, you, you talked about it in our league of record. You were going to shop Jalen Hurts. You were going to try to get some assets for the future. It's a keeper league. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, and I'm going, I have Justin Herbert. And I'm going, eh. I even texted you during the show. I'm like, oh, we should make a, we should make a trade for Jalen yeah. Hurts. And I changed my mind. Well, I was like, I'm not going to do it. Jalen Hurts has been outstanding, had another great week, three rushing touchdowns. Oh, yeah. But he's not putting up – he doesn't have that – what Herbert did here and finished that number one – of the week, the the accounting for nearly 500 yards, just outstanding. Since week three, Justin Herbert has been the number one quarterback twice, the number two quarterback twice. Um, his pace since week three is 4,700 yards and 43 touchdowns, with just 10 interceptions. Also, 416 rushing yards after that performance. Yeah, what we hope is he runs. Like we've mentioned, it a few, unlocks the offense. It it does, and we've mentioned a few times on the show. Justin Herbert is his athletic his athletic measurables, you know, his his 40, his his explosive rating, his quickness rating. It is very very comparable to Josh Allen. Yes. He just has never I mean, he used it a little bit as a rookie like for for some uh, rushing touchdowns here or there, but he's never taken it upon himself of oh there's empty field here. I could rip off a 30-yard run if I just go. So Maybe, maybe this one performance inspires him to say, "Yeah, I should do this a little bit more." And I've never seen an easier ninety yards. Like yeah. when he, he slid at the end of every run, exactly. Like he just took what was given to him. They were playing man coverage. He's like, "Oh, okay, check this out." Yes, five, ten, fifteen yard slide. Get back in the huddle. Kansas City, Houston, Denver for the playoff matchup. So that's what ended up making me decide not to make the move. It, it's kind of philosophical as a fantasy player. Maybe Jalen Hurts is more consistent. Justin Herbert's not consistent, but he can win you a week. And, and depending true. on what you need. Uh, speaking of winning weeks, Aaron Rodgers went out 385-4 and four in this game. His touchdowns were pretty. I mean, just pretty balls. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Jalen Hurts. Mm. Uh, Al, you shouldn't be laughing. You really <laughs> grow up, up Al. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at what is right. Uh, I'm on a roll lately. I'm on a real roll. Um, why doesn't somebody talk about Jalen Hurts? Uh, I'll I'll talk about him since he's a guy I've gotten. You know, seems like all of my main leagues, and I love having him. He has finally put it together where he's looking good on the field and doing well for fantasy. This was not the easiest matchup against the New Orleans Saints. Um, and I think they might make the playoffs. I do too. They've got an easy strength of schedule the rest of the way. Um, the, uh, he had, he had a very nice line on the ground, uh, 18 for 69 and three rushing touchdowns. Um, so it was, it was just great. I mean, uh, Mike, I apologize because I know we were in a matchup oh, yes. against each other yeah. and I had hurts and mm -hmm. it hurts to you. It did. Uh, you, we brought up Aaron Rodgers, the other side of the field, uh, a quarterback I was afraid of because the Green Bay Packers had shut down, um, three great quarterbacks in a row and then Kirk Cousins says no 341 yards three touchdowns gets the victory at home 
Um, and uh, that, he, he was he was awesome. Speaking of awesome, I'll give you guys credit. You had conviction about starting Cam Newton this past week, and he went 21 for 27, 189 and two, ran in a touchdown, 10 carries, looked fine, lost the game, but he's going to be good for fantasy. Yep. And then uh, Big Ben had his best game of the year, fantasy wise, two seventy three and three. Not always pretty. I mean, these downfield shots don't even have a chance anymore. Like if you notice when he throws it downfield to Claypool, they don't even land anywhere near him. But uh, it's nice to get Claypool back. It does give you the possibility that Big Ben can can get it done. They almost battled back and stole that game from the Chargers. Wide receivers, Justin Jefferson was unbelievable. Eight yes. for one sixty nine and two. Yeah, I guess when I say Kirk Cousins was great, what I mean is Justin Jefferson is awesome. Uh he was yeah, he was outstanding and he's been really good for three straight weeks, ten targets. Uh they weren't lying when they said they were gonna get him the ball more, and Kirk is willing to to take the shot deep and he throws a good deep ball. And if you weren't watching, there was a I think it was a sixty yard mm -hmm. or so reception where Justin Jefferson did his best. Like he looked like uh uh Michael Jordan at the end of uh Space oh, yeah. Jam where he's just he's willing his arm to stretch. But it didn't stretch. Yeah, but it was just a little too short. But it did not stretch. Yeah, and he no. was down at the one. So I mean he was he's a half a yard away from from eight for one seventy and three. Devontae Adams, seven for one fifteen and two, destroyed Minnesota, plays them in week seventeen, the championship week. That's great. That's a great recipe. Those divisional games, if you can get another shootout between those two teams, it will mean good things for fantasy players. Elijah Moore. Oh, my goodness. The breakout is real. Doesn't He's done it with three quarterbacks. Two yep, quarter, but you know. none of them have been Zach Wilson. He has not yet had a good game with Zach Wilson. Eight for 141 and one. Let me just get that in there. Yeah, I mean, the last month he's been a top. Uh, this is four in a row uh, where his performances have been top 36 at wide receiver. Um, Five he in had, a row. Uh, he ha oh, that's right. Um, he had a number one finish, and some of it has come in garbage time, but we brought this up. They're going to have a lot of garbage time. I'm not too worried about that. The talent is there for Elijah Moore. So then uh, the question is, is is the only thing to overcome the trusting Jets part of the narrative? Um, I, I still genuinely worry about Zach Wilson's return. Is that is that wrong of me to – No. Um, that's my biggest fear. I, I feel like if – if Flacco is there, if Mike White is there. But when Zach Wilson comes back, he has not yet shown me anything that gives me confidence in the receiving core. Uh, hopefully, you know, Elijah Moore should help him. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm still going to roll with him no matter what. Darnell Mooney, 16 targets, 48% of the Chicago targets. If Allen Robinson misses, he's a smash play. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't, you're seeing – the future, though. I mean, Mooney is going to be the guy there. Robinson's likely to depart unless we get breaking news right now that he signed <laughs> an extension. No? No, just a hamstring injury. MVS, 10 targets, 4 for 1, 23 and 1. He likes to do this from time to time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, generally, it's a scary thing to chase, but we'll decide that, I suppose. He's got the Rams coming up. I don't know. I, w I won't chase it. I mean, it was an awesome play. He obviously has the talent and the quarterback to hit those 80-yard touchdown bombs. Um, it's just if, if you don't get that long, giant play, you get a dud. It's I would rather have the consistent – like I'd rather start a uh, you know a Hunter Renfro than an MVS, even though the ceiling is obviously higher with MVS. A couple bounce-back performances. Uh, Terry McLaurin had been 60th and 35th at the position the previous two weeks. Came back with a number seven. He's had four weeks, number three, four, five, and seven, and then the rest were stinkers. So you just keep starting him. You take the lumps, I guess, and enjoy the blow-up games. And he was great again, five for one, or three and one. Mm -hmm. Mike Williams, it took a while, but he had a big play at the end of the game, five for 97 and one. Uh, more involved, Keenan Allen was good too. What do you? What's your takeaway from the Mike Williams game? Man, it's tough because you watch 96% of that game and Mike Williams was not doing much, you know, four for 30 right. or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that the whole game. Now, obviously, he's got the talent 
to do what he did and get that long touchdown. But it is worth noting, like it took every it took a crazy outcome from the Steelers who were down 17 in the fourth quarter to come and take the lead to force the issue of needing Mike Williams to have that play because Keenum was the guy 13 targets, nine receptions, 112 yards. Um, so I still worry a little bit about Mike Williams. I mean, you got to play him if you want these big games, but it's been a while and you were uh, a minute away from another dud in a row. Adam Thielen, 10 targets, 8 for 82 and a touchdown. The wide receiver, 8 on the year, on pace for 99 receptions. Brandon Ayuk, 7 targets, 7 for 85 and 1. This was a, in the receiving game, this was a Brandon Ayuk week. The, Debo only had two targets and he only had one catch. Ended up with a great game because he was eight for seventy nine and one on the ground. Yeah, I mean uh, he so led bizarre. he led the team um, in all the receiving numbers. I mean he was their main leading receiver. Targets, receptions, had the touchdown. Maybe he's maybe he's back playable. I mean two, two wide receiver one performances in the last three weeks. You know the talents there. I obviously love the guy. He was a my guy coming into the year. I I believed in the talent um, and then the beginning of the year happened, but can you trust him? No, you can't trust him. He can disappear because he can, he's the third, he's the third priority in the offense. Kittle and Debo are going to be the priorities game planning wise, but you can put him into your lineup any week and get a performance like this, which you can't do with other wide receiver two, three options and certain teams. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking at AJ green or Brandon, Ayuk, most weeks I'm going to pick Ayuk because I think the upside in, and potential is is more in his favor. Yeah, seven seven or more targets in three of his past four games. So I I, I think he's back into he's just you can flex him every week. Jalen Waddle eight for sixty five, also a touchdown on the ground. He's the wide receiver twenty on the year. I think he is trustworthy as well. You get into the second half of the year here. Elijah Moore, Jalen Waddle, and Tua's looked good. I mean, we got to we got to say that I I think Tua has looked good. Um, and so if Waddle is their number one guy. Was that he, a legal requirement you had to say that? Is that a did his lawyers approach you? Um it was um, conscience. It was oh, it wow. was my conscience. I just because I've I've not spoken very highly of Tua. I have not believed that he's going to develop into uh, a franchise quarterback, and I'm still not sure he uh will. I mean, obviously the the Dolphins have been trying to replace him with Deshaun Watson. Um but he, he's getting the job done. He's much better than Brissett, and Waddle just seems like a locked-in guarantee for so many targets right now. DJ Moore did score, which is uh, yeah. always something you track. Mm -hmm. Five for 50 and one. Tyler Lockett, four for 115. Had a couple big plays against Arizona. Uh, Russell Wilson looks troubled at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's costing DK Metcalf managers uh, opportunities. Lockett ended up with a big game, and obviously they could break out of that slump at any moment. But, you know, they went from 300-plus passing yards a game down to the 190, 180 range on average in the last couple of weeks. Zach Ertz, 8 for 88 and 2. Big week for Zach Ertz. Yeah, huge week. It's a bye week for him. Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, nice weeks. And? and, and take, take, your moment in the, take your moment in the sun, Mike. My tight end start of the week. It was improbable. Adam Troutman, eight targets, five for 58 and one, and even left the game with an injury. Five for 58 and a score goes out uh, with a... It was by far his best week oh, of the year. Oh, by far, yes. And like the targets have been going up. The, the, the process said, this is a defense that I want to exploit with the tight end position. And Adam Troutman comes through, baby. It was it was amazing to be around yes. Mike during this because, first of all, you both played him in your DFS lineups, and I was thrilled. I mean, I'm looking at the game. I was thrilled too. Jason, it's, were you excited? Uh, ah, soup's thrilled. <laughs> you got 10 games on the year before this week, never scored more than five fantasy points, and they threw a touchdown to, I think it was Juwan Johnson. Yes. And it got called back. Yep. And they redid the play, mm -hmm. and it went to Troutman, <laughs> and Mike lost his mind. <laughs> Because that was it. Like after that one play, it was cash. That's a start of the week. If you played in, in DFS at that price, oh yeah, that was it. You were happy. And then like tight end screens work. kept coming. And yeah, he had a great week. It was really nice to see. It was nice to see the continuation of the targets. I hope that he is okay. Because that's six, 
seven, six, and eight targets the last month. Juwan Johnson did catch a touchdown at the end of the game after Troutman had left. So you're telling me Troutman should have had two? Well, no. Because, That's what I heard. Because <laughs> Juwan did catch the one before Troutman, so that is still in the mix. But you hit. You've you've gone to the bottom of the barrel on a couple of these tight end start of the week picks to try to give people emergency options, and it's worked out. And I am we're doing all right. I'm just we're observing right. and marveling. <laughs> George Kittle has scored three straight games. By the way, nice to see. Not nice to see these guys. Pooped in his big boy pants. Patrick Mahomes. Look who's back. Patrick Mahomes and Dak Prescott in the game that we hoped would be a game oh. that we enjoyed. It was not a game. Gross. To enjoy. I mean, this was a 56 and a half point over under. Um, I hope, it, I hope it, you it, took the under. It hit the under. <laughs> I mean, this was one I was so excited about, really looking forward to the potential, um, you know, it, but it, it didn't work out. If the, if, if the, uh, if the line, <laughs> yes, if the line was 30, which no line has ever been that low to my knowledge, they would have hit the under. Yeah, Dak was 216 and zero with two picks. Mahomes was 260 and zero. Woof. Travis um, Kelsey got the rushing touchdown. What do you think the prop bet for Mahomes and Prescott to to combine for zero passing touchdowns? Oh, it would have – oh, to combine for zero? Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's like – the odds of that happening had to be – They would have They would have just laughed in your face. Don't and, those sports books do the thing where they're like, oh, one touchdown yeah. from this guy and you easy money. Yes. No, the mm. NFL no, – it's just ridiculous. Yeah. But okay, but we're back now. I I know Mahomes put up four hundred and five last week because he was playing against me in the league of record. Uh, but that makes four out of the last five. Patrick Mahomes actively hurting your fantasy team. Yeah, uh, but with the number one overall finish sure. in between there. Sure, yeah. but you. I know it's crazy. I'm not playing him this week. I'm by. But Whoa, I am I am rolling with Mahomes whenever I can. Okay, um, they didn't with Mahomes. They didn't really need him in this game that much, even though the you know it was a, a ten point game. The the Cowboys couldn't move the ball w without without Ceedee Lamb, without Amari Cooper, uh, and, and and Zeke for Zeke, most of the game. Yeah, Zeke got his ankle rolled up on. Didn't look the same. Um, this was an offense that just couldn't move. So the game plan shifted. It seemed for Kansas City, and this was a good. Like I don't, you don't watch a game and go, oh, this was just a terrible performance for Patrick Mahomes. This was a terrible fantasy performance for Mahomes. Well, what do you do with Russell Wilson? Then same conviction to keep playing him. So I want to talk about this. Let me make, let me ask a question because I'm thinking about this, and I was like, I think Russell Wilson might be a great dynasty trade for asset hmm. because this is over in Seattle. Like yes. I was, I've been reading from the beat re reporters there. They're all saying this is the end of an era. It's done. I don't know if – look, Pete Carroll's one of the oldest coaches. He's not able to figure this out right now. The offense is trash. Um, and I, I think that this might they, – they might have to completely change who they are. But in the end, Russell Wilson is still Russell Wilson. He's not always going to be coming off of a finger surgery and – playing as poorly as he's playing i i he's would 32 trust. yeah exactly 32 i mean what age do you think russell wilson loses it 36 38 he he will be in contention for denver as well like i've, I've seen that floating around the twitter sphere so I'm, I'm just thinking he's on a really bad stretch you want to play him anymore this year <sighs> not, not really you see washington he gets to play washington I, I'm not. I'm not. Play, I said this. This Chris Carson gone for the year. They're struggling with injury. I said coming into this game, I was not playing Russell Wilson. I want to wait until after I see him play well because of yeah. how bad he was from the finger. I won't play him against Washington. I, if he has a great game on my bench, great. Then I know he's he's back. But no, I'm not starting him until after he has a good one. Ryan Tannehill, another stinker for Tannehill. Um, and. I I don't blame him. He also threw four interceptions. I do blame him. Well, it was in the rain. You lost your number one, your number two, your number three wide receiver, your number one tight end. He's literally having to come back in the rain with nobody he's played football with. I, 
I give him a pass. Twenty three yards in the rain. Yeah, yeah. The what sucks is if Ryan Tannehill gave you three hundred twenty three and one, you're like, ah, okay, true. That's not that's not the worst thing that could happen. Except four interceptions, four and a fumble, and, right? Yeah, he didn't lose two the fumble. fumbles. So it's so two must. Did he lose them both? Uh, I don't know if he lost them both, but he had six it, turn or six plays that yeah, could so have led to turnovers. That's at, at minimum. That's minus ten points. Negative that's X-rays absurd. on AJ Brown. Okay. That's, uh, more that's tests positive. today, and we'll see if there is more damage. But right. he is just—it's kind of a lost year for AJ Brown. Yeah, it is uh, completely. Joe Burrow. Another disappointing performance, 148-1 yeah. and one in a matchup with the Raiders yeah, I mean, that they won by a billion points. So they, they, they won and easily. They did. This is very similar to Patrick Mahomes in that they did not need him. They gave the ball 30 times to Joe Mixon. They had a lead, so yada, yada. That being said, I mentioned to Mike early in this game, I didn't feel like he looked good. He, he was – he just – he, you know, I, I don't know. He did not impress me. Obviously, he had a bad stat line, but unlike Patrick Mahomes or when I watched the game and he was in control and they were, you know, winning, Burrow just seemed best at handing it off in this game. Well, the other side of the ball wasn't good either. Derek Carr, 215-1 and one with a pick. Dallas coming up. The Avoid Raiders it. have, I mean, yeah, I, yes. I brought this up. Since they, apart. since they lost Henry Ruggs, they have scored 16 points, 14 points, and 13 points. And I think it's more than that. I yeah, do. I mean, the, Josh Jacobs has not been playing good football. They lost. I mean, their their coach had to resign. Yep. Like this, it's a lot. It's unfortunate for a team that started off three and zero. They mm -hmm. were three and zero, and they're going to be in danger of missing the playoffs. I don't think they can make the playoffs in that division. It I, seems I don't impossible. see any chance. Ezekiel Elliott nine for thirty two on the ground, six for thirty six. Not really worth mentioning as a dud. This is like a dud with an asterisk when you get mm -hmm. hurt. Uh, played through an ankle injury, was off the field at times. Yeah. This was a weird week for running backs. One thing to point out is like even low performances ended up in the top twenty four in the week because they're just you had a couple of the the high end guys that were out of this world. They just took everything. They said all the fantasy points this week are ours. Yeah, so Zeke, Zeke, was R <laughs> Zeke was the RB17. Yeah, very disappointing very disappointing week, and yet the RB17. So he probably didn't crush your um, your your matchup because your opponent probably didn't have good. I just hope you didn't play against those two running backs. Here's one I don't care about either, but David Montgomery did not have a big week against Baltimore, but played 95% of snaps as Detroit – Take that, Khalil Herbert. <laughs> so he's he's nothing I'm worried about at all. Damian Harris, um, you know, I, I don't know why he's here either. I mean, he split time with Ramondre, but in on the carries he got, it was 5.6 a carry. Yeah. Um. Obviously, Jeff Wilson is a name that he was disappointing. Yeah. The process was 100. I mean, he got 19 carries, super involved. And if I I believe you, tw you tweeted out, Andy, the uh, play – where Jeff Wilson was standing by himself in the end zone for the touchdown. And it just, whoops, the ball was thrown um, not to him. I will say this, though. Uh, despite the process, and the he has not been a good runner yet in his work so far this year. I mean, he's 2.6 a carry in this game against Jacksonville. He's 2.8 a carry in the game against the Rams. And that's on 29 carries. So he has not had – like Elijah Mitchell, it takes you about three plays to mm -hmm. see this guy break off on an 11-yard run. It hasn't happened for Jeff. Yeah, it and, certainly And gives... he didn't get into the end zone in two games in a row where he got the ball around the goal line. Yeah, he was tackled at the one on a different play um, on their first epic drive where they took like 13 minutes to go down the field and, and got three kicked, points. They kicked on fourth and one. I totally agree with that call. Yeah, I mean, you if you spend the entire quarter driving the ball, you go 90 yards and then you get no points, that feels bad. That's the kind of thing that when you're heavily favored against Jacksonville, you don't risk it because the momentum of losing that point on that drive could be the only reason you lose a game to Jacksonville. Um, but Alex Collins was awful. Um, they tried to use Rashad Penny. I would avoid – I mean, you're avoiding like – can you, Everybody except for like Metcalf and Lockett, I guess. Say, can you can you confidently start Alex Collins as a running back too? No, no. Okay, I don't think so. 
That's that stinks. He he is a. I mean, you can do that without confidence. Yeah, I was going to say he's a <laughs> shoot. I have to start Alex Collins option. Dearness Johnson did not have a good game. Five for twenty six on the ground, no targets. That was disappointing. There was some hope that maybe he'd be flexible. Daryl Williams just one catch. He was not flexible either. No, I mean Clyde Edwards Alaire um, and David Montgomery. There was a lot of questions when they come back because they're they're. Uh, their backups were admirable, um, and they said, your services are no longer required. You mean Nick Chubb? Um, no. Oh. Okay. I, I was just talking about – I mean, that, that's, somebody else? that's true, too, for Dearness. I was just gotcha. mentioning when Khalil Herbert and yeah. um, Daryl Williams were so good. But it, 100%, I mean, uh, you're, you're right with Dearness Johnson. You could throw all three into there. Yeah, I guess that's what we are seeing. They, the incumbent takes it all back. CeeDee Lamb got concussed, disappointed, obviously. Michael Gallup, 10 targets, but just 5 for 44 on the 10 targets. Very disappointing, but I, I will um, I will definitely play him against Detroit. Him or Cedric Wilson? Oh, Detroit. definitely Gallup. Every time they threw to Cedric Wilson, I felt like uh, – I, I think Gallup's just better. I think both of them are interesting on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, DK Metcalf, just 4 for 31 against Arizona. Michael Pittman, just two for 23. Yeah. I mean, you knew it was going to be rough, but that's very disappointing. But on the other hand, when your running back is is tearing up the, the Buffalo Bills defense, why throw it? T. Higgins, two for 15. Very disappointing. Makes it really hard to... I mean, Jamar Chase would have been on this list as if he didn't get a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, T. Higgins, over the last all the year <laughs> has had one performance in the top 20. So I think you, you can just be done with that experiment. There's no real need to, to put them into your lineup. Also, I'm looking, uh, I want to correct something we've been saying because I'm, I'm looking at the schedule. I was a little confused for a second on, on Thanksgiving this coming week, the Cowboys do not play the lions. No, they play the Raiders. Correct. And the lions play the bears. So just an update for next oh, week's okay. schedule. We've been saying that wrong. Yeah. Oops. At least I have. It's Monday. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Devontae Smith, four for 61. Um, six targets. It's all right. Not bad. Brandon Cooks, just two for 18. Brandon Cooks' confidence levels right now with Tyron Taylor. That was so bizarre. I mean. Two bad weeks. In, well, they're really just this. It yeah. was 29 the week before. I mean, and they were they were up. It was a very rainy game. If you, if you, if you got to see Coach Vrabel. <laughs> on the sideline, <laughs> he looked like the saddest man in the entire world. It, His hair was just drenched. Andrew Siciliano <laughs> got me with the someone get this man a hat quote because his it, hair. Like the gif of, um, oh, oh, the, mm. the shoot. Sorry, I lost the reference. But the, the time, who's the time traveler? It's been, the show's been on Doctor forever. Who? Yes, the doctor. I think it's a Doctor Who gif of him like crying in the rain. Oh yeah, 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 I can yeah, picture yeah. that. Okay, gift, thank man. you. That's what thank Mike you, Vrabel yeah. looked like. I want to. We need an answer to this one. Yeah, Emmanuel Sanders with another stinker. Uh, he has been bad over the last four weeks. He's on pace for about 500 yards, no touchdowns. Um, you saw Dawson Knox get back involved into this game. I mean, it's, is, is is it over? Like, do you put him on your bench? Was this a possibly? It's it's difficult to really say because Gabe Davis got a little like bit. Of Josh action. Josh Allen played poorly. Yes, the passing at everyone sucked. Like Stephon Diggs came through for a, a good fantasy day because he caught two touchdowns. I think he had four receptions and just not very many yards. So like it was Gabe Davis, one hundred and five yards two weeks ago. Like yeah, so Stephon Diggs was four receptions for twenty three yards. Yeah. I mean, the, was, the, I, the passing attack for the Bills. I mean, the, the, the Bills offense, I believe, and, and I think that the Bills, who are amazingly not leading the division now, the Patriots are yes. leading the division, I think if the playoffs started today, I'm not sure the Bills are in, which is mind-blowing. Really? I will, I will. I know, right? Like, that's crazy. But I think at best they're seventh. That's that's something you can find out. Yeah, I will I will check that. But my point is they are falling apart. Josh Allen threw for two hundred yards in this game. What's funny is the number one like 
They're currently the seventh seed. There seventh. you go. So last, so they are in that bonus spot right now. They're in that bonus spot with the player with the best NFL MVP odds going into the weekend was Josh Allen. Josh Allen was plus 210 over any other player in the NFL. And he's not playing like an MVP. No. This has been an okay year for Josh Allen, and they their defense and stuff have figured it out. Now, he has the ability to level up in a given week mm -hmm. and, and win a week for you. But, yeah, disappointing performance for him in a game that wasn't competitive. You know, they couldn't stop Jonathan Taylor, and they couldn't bounce back. You thought the game script would have led to lots of value for Allen, Diggs, Sanders, Knox in the second half, and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Um. So I, as far as Emmanuel Sanders goes, that might be something that you need to chase the offense bending in the right direction before you put him back in your lineup. Yeah, I can agree with that. It was, to, to be fair, it was also raining there pretty heavily the second half when they were trying to come back. Dan Arnold, no targets. What? That was insane. What? 65% of snaps, 23 routes, no targets. Agnew it's, went down to injury. I, I have it on good authority. He was wearing an invisibility cloak. Did someone <laughs> mess <laughs> With him? Did someone mess with the postman? Oof. I mean, I don't... What happened? Yeah, it was... What happened? Makes no sense. He still played 65% of the snaps. You look at the last several weeks, 10 targets, 7 ah, targets, ah, 7 ah. targets, and then zero, nothing. Was this just Kyle Shanahan and the, and the 49ers saying, well, that's their best option, and let me try to take them away? I, it's It's hard. It's one of those, like... Do you just throw it out because Probably. he was on a roll of such target volume? Probably. Yeah, and against Atlanta this coming week, yeah, I'm throwing it out. Uh, TJ Hawkinson, six for 51. Yeah. I The way I'm picturing the Hawkinson situation is he's hungry, and he shows up, and there are just, every week, just scraps on the table. And he is diving on the table, <laughs> and he is trying to get a full belly but there's just not enough there. That's boding well for this next matchup. Dude plays on Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, you want to eat? Get yourself some turkey. Problem is the person carving that turkey is Tim, Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle? <laughs> Tim and that Boyle. man can't use a knife. What an unfortunate last name. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I mean, just, they, I'm they, sorry. It's just, you've got Blow. Boyle. Bl uh, yeah. Blow. That's one of the plagues, right? We can call him the plague. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, the plague. Yeah, I'm I like to it. go with David Blau and and the Driscoll. I mean, their backups are providing us with content. But also, why is why is look Tim Boyle could be a delightful fellow. Why is he a backup? Why is he in the NFL? Why is he a backup in the NFL? I mean, just given his college pedigree. You mean where he threw a touchdown? A uh, touch, yeah. Wait, I mean, he had one. Is that true? Uh, I I saw someone say that. Let me vet. Uh, yeah, I mean he he had a uh, wow. Yeah, he, he's here's his collegiate statistics. Oh, thank you. Three seasons, one touchdown, thirteen interceptions. Uh, yeah, it NFL feels like bound. You, <laughs> How is that guy a backup? His final season at Connecticut, he had no touchdowns and two interceptions. So, Draft him. <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it was on the basis of a strong arm, an NFL arm. Ah, uh, okay. So he was one of those players. I think the Packers actually brought him into camp. I think he was originally a Packer, and it was because he could throw the ball, not necessarily to yeah. his team. Wait no. a minute. And that was – so this last year in Connecticut was 2015? Yeah. So he's been hanging around as a professional for that long? Yeah, I mean, he didn't do anything in this game to make me think he belonged there, but – uh Man. That's that, what happened. That's – this guy's living the dream. He's the one feast. He's the one feeding Hawkinson. So beware. Yeah, that that's a good is point. that's the job. Be ha this guy. Be the backup quarterback who never has to do anything. It it feels. I mean, like, you got practice, but you, I'm saying you don't have to go out and get damaged in the, in a real NFL game. You just collect paychecks. I know the show's running long, but it does feel like Tim Boyle found a like. Good for you, Tim. He found a name placard that got him into the building at one, and then he's just <laughs> been playing. He's been playing a quarterback on the side like, no, 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 I'm the backup. <laughs> I he, mean, and it's worked. He must be such a team guy. I mean, his attitude of practice just must be infectious. Um, They're paying him two and a half million dollars. He's got the best job. <laughs> what? What? Could you imagine playing college football? What? Throwing one touchdown no. in your career and being like, 
One touchdown. I I can take it to the next level. One touchdown. This man is making. But, 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 but wait, he had a 48% completion percentage. Oh, okay. Millions of dollars. Would come on. If he wants to come on the show and tell us how he worked this out, I'd love to know because I think I could do it. I could. You, you could throw one I touchdown could, and fourteen interceptions. You've seen me play flag football. I could Absolutely. go one and thirteen ratio. Yeah, I mean, this guy is my hero, Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle is Thanksgiving my, legend is coming my up. Hero. So, anyways, Hawkinson, <laughs> <laughs> um, Kyle Pitts, Hunter Henry, Dalton Schultz, Tyler Conklin—they were all pedestrian weeks. Pitts got shut down by the. Shut down defense. Mm -hmm. I want them to get Cordero back bad. Yeah, they do as well. And they they needs he is going to be so incredibly good when there isn't only him to stop. Or when he plays like this upcoming week, a team where when they focus on him, they probably still cannot completely stop him. Like Jacksonville. Yeah. And Tampa's a, good, a decent matchup there at tight end too. Uh, although again, if they're smart enough to to stop him, maybe. All right, any other duds you guys want to talk about? I mean, Hunter Henry, he didn't get a touchdown, and that's – Yeah. This is this is who he is. He's a, Every um, week he's a dud, but he's just got a touchdown, yeah. so he's good. And then Dalton Schultz, he, he's still – He may be Mr. Necessary on Yeah, on that's what I was going to say is Dalton Schultz, eight targets, six for 53. I mean, that doesn't – That's not bad. That, that's doesn't, not bad. that doesn't submarine your tight end position, but he's – going to be extremely necessary yeah. on Thanksgiving if those two number one weapons are gone. Yeah, I'm calling the doctor as my start of the week already. <laughs> right now. Dr. Been... Schultz, uh, he will... <laughs> you So you were workshopping this yes, while we were watching the games. Yeah. And I found it to be delightful. I, I wasn't sure if it would make it onto the show, but you're you're going forward with, it's with Dr. Dr. Schultz. So the podiatrist, yes. Dr. The, Schultz. That's exactly right. Um, and he's he's going to have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> now, now that's a play on Dr. Schwartz. No, or no, Dr. Uh, no that's Schultz. Schultz. See, that's See, why I don't like it. Schultz. It's because it's, it's too much of a departure. Schwartz is the eye doctor guy in Arizona. Yeah, no, it's Schultz. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Schultz. Yeah. Schultz. Dr. Schultz. <laughs> it's not good. It's great. It's You're terrible. Right. It's not good. It's great. Uh, yeah, the Dr. Schultz <laughs> is, uh, I'm calling him now as my start of the week. I know, that's all the buttons I got for that. Oh, I've got one more. Yeah, buddy! Doctor introducing Dr. Schultz. I'm not doing it. Mm. I will the not. Foot, the Foot Clan will. And, and because you introduced it, oh. I'm going to be spelling Luth, L-O-O-T-H, for one week. Well, the Foot Clan will uh, bring their oh, pitchforks out. He and did get Luth late. He did. He yeah. did. Although, um, before that, it was not pretty. No, it, <laughs> Snap was, it counts went back and, to Ebron. Yeah. Who, but who, Eric Ebron is hurt again. All right. Uh, by the way, last night, my son was down 90 points to the Jonathan Taylor manager going into the game. And he tells me, and my son, you know, he's he's 10, so eternal optimist in fantasy. Realist, he is not. He it's, hasn't been broken yet. Yeah, he hasn't been, he hasn't been destroyed over time. So he goes into the, the Monday night game or the uh, Sunday night game and he goes, I still could, I could still do it. And he's got, happen. he's down 90. He has, he's got Herbert and he's got Eckler and he's got Mike Evans and. The, his opponent still has Saquon, and I'm like, dude, go to bed. Like you, and I get this all caps text. While well, he should have been sleeping, I, it says I have a chance. <laughs> He's down six. Wow. If Evans outscores Saquon by six, he will make a miracle comeback. Thank you, Eckler. Thank you, Herbert. What a the fantasy football is a funny, funny game. I want to thank PristineAuction.com for supporting the show. A DeAndre Swift signed jersey right now, fifteen bucks ends tonight. Darren Waller signed jerseys at $65 ends tonight. You can check them all out at pristineauction.com. You can check them out on the set. There's always right right behind us. We always got a jersey up. Uh, awesome, excellent up there right now. So what a game by Eckler. My goodness. All right, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Waivers, streamers on tomorrow's show. Until then. Yeah, we will see you next time. Until then, Bookland, go out and just be like Tim Boyle. Just live. Live. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com.
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.